Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. There's a fascinating fight. It's riveting. And it's going to happen this weekend. It's taking place at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. It's that big. Right? It is the Battle of Ohio. Adrian, the problem Broner, wants to be a problem. For Showtime, Sean Porter. Now, I have a clear preference in this fight. I think Sean Porter wins the fight. You know that movie Taken? You know the part where Liam Neeson finds out that his daughter has been kidnapped and he's on the phone with the kidnappers and he says, look, I may not have a lot of money, but I have a collection of skills, right? And he offers to trade some of his skills to free his family member, right? Well, that really is a boxing movie, isn't it, in a sense? Sean Porter has a collection of skills that he can use, in my opinion, to possibly destroy Adrian Broner. I'm expecting Broner to get caught. I'm expecting Broner to get caught cleanly. But there's a catch. Right? Welcome to boxing in 2015. The catch is the catch weight. You just saw Daniel Gill in a post-fight press conference say that he wasn't fully himself because he had to lose three pounds to fight Miguel Cota, right? He couched it in a way where he wasn't making excuses for being KO'd, but he conceded that losing the three extra pounds from 160 to 157, right, hurt him in the fight. Understand, too, that fight didn't make it to the second half of the fight. It wasn't like Daniel Gill was out there in the 11th round and thought, you know what, I'm not fully myself here. You know, those three pounds robbed me of a little bit of stamina. No, it hurt Gill in the first half of the fight. Right? You're out there, you say, ha, huh, I made the way in. I'm here for the fight. What chance does my opponent have? Then you're out there and you're saying, man, you know what, I'm not myself today. Something's wrong. What's changed? Right? I'm feeling sluggish. You know, the body's just not there. Now, if you thought three pounds was a big deal, going from 160 to 157, my concern on this fight is it has a catch weight of 144. Sean Porter is going to have to come in three pounds lighter than the 147 weigh-in weight at which he fought Cal Brook. Right? In my opinion, let me be eloquent here, let me pick my word choice carefully. In my opinion, in two words, that sucks. Right? I think it's terrible. I think catch weights really are hurting things a little bit. I'd like to know which Sean Porter is going to show up. Is it going to be Showtime Sean Porter? Or is it going to be Sean Porter dreaming of a good meal? Right? Now, my assumption here is because Sean Porter has had some time and because Sean Porter has always been a professional. In other words, he hasn't been Johan Guzman. He hasn't been Nicholas Walters. Right? Because Sean Porter always shows up on weight always seems prepared, always looks to be in shape. In other words, I don't see a Roberto Duran or a Ricky Hatton between fights where the guy looks like he's gained three or four weight classes. Sean Porter always looks in shape to me. I'm going to make a leap of faith, and it's a big leap. Might be disproven at the weigh-in, but I'm going to assume that Sean Porter is not going to be as bothered by the three pound weight loss as Daniel Gill, right? 
I'm going to assume that Sean Porter shows up at the weigh-in and makes weight. And still looks like Sean Porter and is still able to do the things that Sean Porter can do. And I believe those skills are going to be too much for Adrian Broner. I believe there's an optical illusion in this fight. I'll concede that in the pocket, Adrian Broner is better. Right? I'll concede that Adrian Broner is better defensively. I'll concede that Adrian Broner can throw the shorter punches with power. Broner has a short right uppercut that's devastating. I'll concede Broner is an elite chess player. There is no question about it. Right? Here's the problem. Below the waist matters. It does. Right? You could be A-plus in the pocket. The question is, how are you going to get the other guy to meet you in the pocket? Adrian Broner just doesn't have the mobility of Sean Porter. There is a mismatch in this fight, in my opinion, in terms of foot speed. In terms of suddenness, Adrian Broner, in my opinion, is not sudden. By sudden, I mean a guy who can just bum rush you, right? Think home invasion. You're in your living room, you're watching TV, you're unprepared, you're eating popcorn, you're with your family. Then suddenly, the front door blows off the hinges. You look up, some intruder is in your house so fast, he catches you naked. He catches you. Like Sean Porter caught Pauli Malinaji. Understand, both of these guys fought Pauli Malinaji. Malinaji had time against Adrian Broner. Right? Malinaji's pumping a jab. Malinaji's still a world class fighter. He's on his back foot. Adrian Broner is coming forward. It's so predictable that Malinashi could have looked at his watch, could have, you know, looked at the crowd, could have waved at a few people, right? Malinashi understood, hey, if I can just shoot a jab, keep him busy, stay on the outskirts of the pocket, not inside the pocket, I can go 12 rounds. I can win rounds. I made a video before that fight saying, hey, this could be an upset. Right? Adrian Broner back then was viewed as the next big thing in boxing. Right? I thought Malinaji was a live underdog in that fight. Right? I believe that video is still up on YouTube. Let's just say Malinaji goes 12 rounds with Adrian Broner. That's a split decision. Now, think it through. The fight was in New York City, Malinaji's backyard. You're Adrian Broner. Your assumption should be that you're not the house fighter. That you're fighting a guy who has had a long history of success in New York City. Right? All I'm saying is Broner's fight style cut that fight so close he easily could have lost it. Think about it. He wins a split decision against Malinaji, right? Now, Malinaji couldn't look at his watch, couldn't look at people in the crowd when he fought Sean Porter because Porter is the kind of guy who you look up, he's across the street. Then suddenly you look up, here's his fist, you're getting drilled. You're like, how did this guy cross the street that fast? Right? You know, you're, you're, you're on the canvas and you're thinking, man, what, you know, what just happened? That suddenness is the difference in this fight. Porter is going to be circling Adrian Broner. Understand there are trade-offs in boxing. Broner has chosen to accent his punching power by having his legs far apart and by being flat-footed. Right? Well, the problem is, in my opinion, that limits his mobility. He's not on the balls of his feet. Right? You go back and you look at these old Ray Robinson 
takes. Why am I mentioning Ray Robinson? Because I want to mention one of the absolute best in the sports history. Now understand, Ray Robinson was a puncher. But Ray Robinson operated off the balls of his feet. There's a lightness to his feet. Right? There's no lightness with regard to Adrian Broner. And understand the issue is major because everything flows from your balance. Right? Adrian Broner can suddenly decide to be up on the balls of his feet in this fight against Sean Porter and think that's going to work. Right? Think that he has the stamina. Think that he's going to be able to deal with the difference between what he's accustomed to having power from being flat-footed to now suddenly being up on the balls of his feet he might not have the same power let me say further the Cal Brook Sean Porter fight was a bit of an illusion right understand Cal Brook has great legs Cal Brook can move so could Sean Porter so, of course, you're watching the fight, and the fight ends up being a grab fest at times, right? Because both guys understood that if one moved this way, the other could move this way. If the other moved this way, the other could move this way. So they, of course, tried to solve it in the middle of the ring. Here, Sean Porter knows if the kitchen gets too hot and he backs away, Broner, in my opinion, won't be able to come find him. Right By the time Broner gets there, Porter could have set his watch, as I said earlier in this video. Right, Porter could have, in my opinion, you know, signed autographs. To, you know, let's just say, to me, the foot speed gap is pronounced. The suddenness is pronounced. Right, there's a suddenness gap. Porter can lead with power shots. He doesn't have to play chess, right? He's not looking at the chessboard and thinking, okay, if I move the queen over here, then three moves from now, I could do... No, he doesn't have to do that. He could literally be away from the chessboard. Just look for an opening. These guys are playing a different game. So I'm expecting Broner to try to walk down Porter. I really am. Because that's what Broner knows. He's going to fight the same fight that he fought. The same fight that he fought against Paulie Malinashi. Understand, Broner tried to go flat footed against Marcus Maidana. Right? So he's going to be flat footed. He's going to be trudging along. He's going to try to walk down Sean Porter. That's going to be more bear for Sean Porter because that's what Porter wants. Right? Porter wants that predictability because then Sean can circle, look for an opening. He's not interested in thinking three or four moves ahead. He's going to look for an opening. He's going to come in. Left hook or straight right hand. Right? Understand. If you lead with power shots, that hurts a guy with a defensive construct. Because he's looking for cues to shoulder roll and stuff like that. If you can pot shot him, you're often going to have him defenseless. So, I know Broner looks great in the pocket. No doubt about it. I don't expect this fight to be fought there. Let me say too, the first time I saw Sean Porter, he fought with a bounce. Right? He corrected that later in his career. Right? I saw him get beaten, in my opinion, in the pocket by Julio Diaz. Right? He corrected that in the rematch. Cal Brook was able to tie him up. Given Porter's history, I'm expecting Porter to be prepared not to get tied up. He doesn't want to be tied up. He wants to be the guy who's mobile, who's able to come in with the kind of power shots that drilled Pauli Malinaji. I think Sean Porter wins this fight. My only concern, given the catch weight, is whether Sean Porter 
at 144 is still Sean Porter, right? Look at the weigh-in carefully. You need to judge for yourself how good Sean Porter looks. Understand he started his career at much higher weight classes, right? I like Porter here. I'm going to hedge the play because the odds allow it. With Broner by KO, right? My attitude is simply Broner has a punch, might be able to catch Porter as he comes in, right? But if I had one bet to make, it would be on Sean Porter to win this fight. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. The fight's just a few days away. The more I think about it, the more I believe the foot speed gap is too pronounced here. Let me say something else, too. I know I'm going to hear from people who remember the Daniel Ponce de Leon fight, right, where Broner gets up on his toes, right? Let me say this. Broner up on his toes doesn't have the power of flat-footed Broner. Understand, too, that it's debatable which one's slower, molasses or Daniel Ponce de Leon, right? You're talking about a very cat-quick Sean Porter, right? I'm telling you, when you're fighting a guy this fast and this explosive, right, you're going to rely on your plan A. You're not going to suddenly show up and decide, you know what? Sean Porter's up on his toes moving around the ring. Let me be up on my toes when that's not your game. I don't view Adrian Broner as a switch. I view Floyd Mayweather as a switch, a guy who can go flat-footed, a guy who can go up on his toes, right? Let's just say I don't see that in Broner, right? Nor do I see the Terrence Crawford, Tyson Fury ability, to decide not just toes or flat-footed, but right or left-handed. I don't see that with Broner. So, I like Porter to win the fight. I'm going to hedge to play with Broner by KO because Broner does have power, and there is the distinct possibility that the catch weight drains Porter of his punch resistance. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.